1.8 part 3. Part 2, I, I ended up cutting up part 1 and in, into 1 and 2, so there's no intro. All right, so we talked about Icarus. That was the last thing we are looking at about uh, subordination, meaning not focused on. All right, so we're going to talk about action a little bit, um, and I'm going to show you some more examples of how um, the direction and the dramatic contrast and placement relationships, okay, are, are bringing our focal point. Now, part of the reason I am showing you so much about focal points is because it's bringing in all these other principles and it's also bringing in elements to demonstrate that. When you guys are writing about a line in a piece, you have to tell me exactly where that line is and what does it make up? And I'm going to talk about that more. Same is true of color or any other element. You have to really flesh it out, okay? So contrast is going to be the first one we're going to look at here. And it can be in a couple different ways. Value, color, or size. It can, you know, there, there can even be other things. But basically, um, in this particular piece, uh, the main thing we're looking at is the contrast. The focal point is our... Um, our funeral of St. Bonaventure here. And the reason we look at him is because this is the whitest white and that's the blackest black. Also, this head is quite black, but there's a lot of darkness around him and he's wearing this entirely white garment. So that's where our eyes go to. Now again, he's, well, I'll, I'll say this. There's some secondary focal points that your eyes going to move around with the eyes, the eye movements, people talking to each other, the hands, and so on. You're meant to look at the whole picture, right? But the main thing you want to focus on is uh, Saint Bonaventure. So you don't want to um, look away from him immediately, but you will eventually study the whole painting, right? That's our artist's uh, idea here, or their way they're trying to get us to look at things. The other things that are, are focusing on our saint, again, the hand is pointing there. This hand is even more of an arrow here. We have hands going toward him. We have eyes. Eyes are coming down here. Eyes are coming down here. So eyes are an implied line. Think about that. Contrast is also important. Color, we have a bit of red right there. Um, also some red in here. Red is something that we think of with fire and blood. And those are two things that alert us in a primal way. And that is why we look at red uh, faster than anything else. Okay. So this gives you a little more information uh, on all of this. And line is going to be our next one. And we're going to get something that uses line more um, clearly. And remember... A lot of times there's multiple elements used to make a focal point, okay? But you got to describe these things and explain why. In this particular piece, this is a, a Mughal miniature. Now these little miniatures are really fascinating because if you look at this, it's 8 inches high by 5 inches wide. So this is half a sheet of regular notebook paper. It's tiny. And these little um, Arabic script pieces, all these little tiny details, that's like with a two hair brush, you know. It was a very specialized um, way of working. It was Persian originally, brought to India, um, and it was um, a big part of Indian and Middle Eastern culture from 1520 something until 18 something. So for like 300 years these were made and they're very beautiful, usually tempera or gouache um, they're sort of gouache is a watercolor with a little bit of chalk in it. Okay, so back to line. When we have diagonals, remember, we see action. And in this case, our artist is pulling off the symmetry of this um, cross plan here and it's making it at a slight diagonal so our eye will go there and it'll come down into this pool here because we want to focus on this pool. Water is important. Again, these are sort of desert areas, and w gardens and water are very important in the Islamic uh, religion and culture because they are in very dry areas, and 
having a garden with plentiful fruit is really an important um, focal point. So the gardens really and these miniatures are, and I would also say like tile and architecture and um, this beautiful script and calligraphy were all art forms that were respected in the Islamic culture at this time and before and after as well. Okay, so our diagonal goes here. That is a line. So when you're going to write about something like this piece, you're going to say the diagonal line is the focal point of this piece, and it consists of uh, water flowing downward into a square uh, pool um, in a garden, right? There are also horizontals going across, which lead us to our um, focal, another secondary focal point, which would be the Emperor Babur, you know. So we're not going to ignore that he's here, but water is really critical in the fact that his um, gardeners and people that are working for him have achieved um, this magnificence. That is our initial focal point. Okay, so that's how line is used. See, we have some directional lines here. We're looking at him. He's also pointing. There's another implied line there with his hand. Eyes, eye contact, implied line there. Um, well, this, well, I, I'm going to back up. This hand or arm is actual, an actual line when you think about that, right? That is an actual line, but then from the fingertip to perhaps this fellow, that is an implied line. Or he's might, he might be pointing the water. I, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure on this one. But the fingertip to the object is the implied line. The arm itself is an actual line. It's an actual thing we can see. Okay? So diagonal flowing down this way. And then um, a horizontal going across here. And there is movement there. So symbolizing paradise. And again, water is important. Paradise on earth. He uh, was able to manufacture or fabricate heaven on earth, so that makes him even more powerful. Water in the desert, you know, as we all know, that is very important. Okay, so also the four cardinal directions re represent life and eternity. I skipped that, so make sure you, you know do the reading on top of what I'm saying. There's going to be more detail. Okay, here we go, drama. Oh my goodness, what's happening here? Judith is decapitating <clears throat> Holofernes. He, Holofernes is uh, a gentleman that she uh, met with and seduced. And then once she's got him in place, she brings out this sword and does this deed and, and cuts his head off and her maid helps her. This is really an important piece in feminism. I want to talk most about formalism which is our elements and principles, but I'll back, I'll, I'll supplement by saying this is an important piece because it's painted by a woman and she also chose uh, an event in the Bible, a story where a woman was the heroine and did a manly act that uh, otherwise, you know, normally if someone's going to use a sword, it would be a man. So she did this heroic thing um, and cut his head off and um, that be empowered her on the status of a man. Um, Gentileschi, she was not honored in her time. She became someone who went into obscurity. This painting was not included in, in uh, art book, art historical context or anywhere. It wasn't known about for quite some time, um, but now we've sort of repaired or restored her into the art history story. Okay, so... When we're talking about her um, work here, she is uh, someone like Caravaggio, another person who uses chiaroscuro. The chiaroscuro is the three-dimensionalizing of a two-dimensional um, painting. Now, we are in a flat surface. This is a painting, but if you look at all these sheets with all these shadows, highlights, shadows, um, I think it's easier to see sort of the bedding down here. The arms also get three-dimensionalized by this shading here. That's called chiaroscuro, okay? Where it becomes an element or formalist conversation, element and principles is our contrast, right? Bright highlights here, highlights here, white here. The light source is bright right here and it's very dark here. So we have that contrast. We also have some red here, which is gonna bring our eyes and of course we have our blood flow there. 
that's important. Our lines are coming down on her arm and the sword. We're going to pay attention to those things. Okay, so directional lines are here. Um, also his knee, I skipped that one, sorry. And then her arms as well. So we know that the focal point is here. Not that we weren't going to look at somebody's head with blood spurting out of it. We probably will anyway. Um, but we're really bringing it home with all of these other directional lines.